Hey everyone, my name is Corel, and today we're going to be doing a new tutorial. Uh, this time we are going to start digging into weapons systems. More specifically, we're going to start with missiles. So uh, first off, let's go over some of the themes of missiles. That is, what missiles are good at, what they do well, what they don't do well. Uh, missiles have pretty strong damage. They're uh, pretty reliable damage. Uh, they have a ton of utility. There are so many different things, so many different roles you can fill with this type of weapon. There's a lot of countermeasures to missiles, but it's difficult to counter every single possible thing that missiles can do. So you have uh, this odd dichotomy where uh, missiles can both be easily countered, and it's actually really hard to counter them at the same time, because if you get into some of the more esoteric types of missiles, uh, there aren't a lot of counters to some very specific types of missiles. So uh, we'll get into that probably. I'm going to divide this up into two tutorials. Uh, this first one is going to be all about the missile components and what all of those do. And then uh, I'm going to put out a second tutorial on missiles, showing off some of the various different types of missile weapon systems that I've found uses for over the years. So first off, let's just go ahead and take a look at our components. Uh, as usual, for from the depth systems, we start off with a controller. This is a missile weapon controller. Uh, this controls all of a set of missiles that will fire and operate together. So uh, when you fire a weapon system, you are actually triggering the missile controller, which will send a signal out to all attached missile pads that will launch all attached missiles. Uh, there's various different ways of controlling that that we will get into in a bit. So first off, uh, we've got connectors. These are your bread and butter, well, connectors. They connect things. You've got a missile controller there. We've put a bunch of connectors attached to it. Worth noting the uh, missile controller can also attach on the sides. So I can put these out here and it will work just as well as if I put the connectors in front. All right, next one up is the IFF uh, block. Well, I call it IFF. It is the Identify Friend or Foe add-on. And what this does is this will stop uh, various different types of detection on the missiles uh, from identifying friendly vehicles or yourself and locking onto you. So uh, this is basically a don't shoot friendlies lock. There is no reason not to have this if you are using any sort of radar, sonar, or infrared guided missile. If you're not using one of those three, you don't really need this block, uh, but I like to have it on pretty much every missile system I create that is going to use any sort of a uh, quote-unquote normal missile system otherwise. Uh, it's just too good to give up, uh, though it is fairly expensive at 100 materials each, so you want to be a little careful about just spamming these on everything. Next up is the Staggered Fire add-on. Staggered Fire actually has a setting associated with it. If we hit Q on that, we can see there's a stagger in seconds, and that defaults to 0.1 seconds. What this is going to do is if you have, say, eight missiles, uh, one attached to each of these connectors, um, this Staggered Fire add-on is going to add a 0.1 second delay between each missile firing, so I will take a total of 0.8 seconds to fire all eight missiles. So uh, that will essentially uh, create just a little bit of a gap between each missile, so you're not firing off all of them at once. And that's very useful in order to keep the missiles from arriving at the target all at the same time. And if, say, they're aiming at the same block, uh, that block would be horrendously overkilled and we'd probably waste some damage. So the uh, uh, stagger fire is quite useful for that sort of thing. Uh, it also, if you're using explosive missiles, uh, prevents the explosions from disrupting your other missiles. It won't destroy the other missiles, but it will knock them out of their normal path and uh, cause those missiles to likely miss their target. So uh, very good for that as well. Uh, so next up we have the laser emitter. The laser emitter attaches to any connector attached to a missile controller, and whatever the whatever target the missile controller is aimed at, whether you are aiming at yourself or the AI is aiming it, um, this laser emitter will attempt to point at that target. If I exit build mode here and uh, grab my character, 
uh, I can aim this around anywhere where this laser can have line of sight to. So I can aim this all over the place. You'll notice that this uh, is currently red. If I spawn a Marauder in as a target and turn its firing ability off, and then we have that Marauder over there. If I aim it at the target, it turns green. That's how you know it is actually pointed at a valid target. I'm also going to, for now, turn the Marauder's ability to move off, and hopefully that will keep it from ramming us. Okay, uh, moving on. We have, next up in line, oh, uh, what the laser emitter does. Um, the laser emitter is used to target a particular target for certain types of missiles to aim at. So um, this is useful because we can have the AI controlling the precise block that we're trying to aim at. Uh, if we're using a specific, uh, uh, oh, what's it called? The uh, aim point selection card, that's the name of it. If we're using one of those on there, uh, and that's telling us to aim at a very specific block on a vehicle, uh, we can use the laser emitter to target that block very precisely, whereas with other types of missile guidance, we might not be able to target that block. So that's all well and good. Uh, laser emitters are blocked by smoke, so any smoke between you and the target will stop the laser at the point where it enters the smoke entirely. Uh, when you're talking about damaging lasers, they're not entirely countered by smoke, but uh, these laser emitters from the missile systems as soon as they touch smoke, the beam stops, and you lose targeting. So that's very um, painful if you're firing a large missile salvo. And so any vehicles that are going to be using smoke heavily, probably not good targets to use a laser emitter on. Uh, there are some settings on this missile laser. If I hit Q on it, uh, I can switch this between turning it on and off. I can switch it between controlling... Uh, only missiles attached to the same missile controller, only missiles on the same vehicle, regardless of whether they're fi fired from this specific missile controller, or any missiles fired by my team. So uh, I can control that fairly precisely and get it to do different things uh, based on those settings. Next up we have the winch. Now the winch is used for harpoons. It looks like... It might need to be on a launcher component. And sorry about the noise there. That is the launcher setting up. Yes, this needs to be attached to an actual launch pad. We'll get into the launch pad shortly. But this needs to be attached to a launch pad. And then you've got in the Q menu, uh, you've got the amount of power it, the winch can use. That is engine power. Uh, you have the maximum desired range, uh, or rather the minimum desired range. Uh, the winch will pull targets to within this range and then stop pulling. And then you've got a release timer that will, uh, after a certain number of seconds, the winch will drop the target uh, and drop that cable out. So there's also a brake cable at maximum length. Uh, dumb thing, you can technically use missiles as vehicle propulsion if you do not turn this, or if you do not have this checked. I yeah, I believe this checked. Um, that's very unreliable and <laughs> very difficult to use. But uh, you can have the cables not break at maximum length, in which case you fire a missile, it goes out to the end of the cable length, and then just sits there tugging on your vehicle. Uh, don't do that. It's generally a bad idea. Anyway, uh, moving right along, we have next up the ejector add-on. Ejectors, again, need to connect to missile launch pads, and these are going to give you a bit of launch speed out of the gate uh, from a launch pad. And the amount of speed it's going to give you is going to depend on the, the type of missile launch pad. Uh, so if I add one ejector, I've got a launch speed of 115 meters a second from a small launcher, or I've got 50 meters a second from a medium launcher. Or if I put out a large launcher, and add one ejector, loud noises. Uh, then I get 25 meters per second. That doesn't seem like a lot. However, uh, one thing I'm going to show you here, if I was to put down a large launch pad, 
and put as many ejectors as I possibly can around this thing. I end up with 175 meters per second launch speed. That's actually quite a bit of launch speed. That's more than one ejector over here. Obviously, I could get this up higher if I wanted to, uh, but uh, missiles are subject to momentum and they obey all the normal laws of momentum. So um, these ejectors don't really care about the length of the missile. They're going to give you that launch speed regardless. So effectively, the longer and larger your missile is, the more momentum you are getting out of that missile for a given launch speed. So I've got 175 meters per second here. If I was to make this, say, a 20 block long large missile, that would have an incredible amount of momentum. So drag would slow that down very little. Effectively, I could launch that without needing a thruster on it a very long distance. So yes, ejectors are a very useful tool when you're talking about getting missiles to move uh, right out of the gate. And there are some interesting tricks that we will describe in our second tutorial involving getting a launcher, uh, missile launcher rather, to uh, fire a uh, unpropelled missile a very, very long distance. So next up we have the Lua transceiver. A Lua transceiver has to attach to a missile launch pad. It cannot connect from the back. That's consistent with all launch pads. These things that connect to them cannot connect from the back. The only thing that can connect from the back is a connector. So actually, if I uh, was to do this here, uh, going back to our ejector add-ons, I could have added another ejector here, and that would give me a total of 200 meters a second of launch speed. So um, connectors are the only thing that can connect behind a launch pad. Uh, everything else has to connect to the side of a launch pad. That includes the Lua transceiver, and what the Lua transceiver does is allows you to program a missile using the Lua scripting language. I haven't gone over this a whole lot. I might do a tutorial on this at some point in the future, but this is programming. Uh, you have to be able to program at least a little bit in order to use these. Uh, this Lua box lets you write code in here. There's a whole big section of help in here as far as what you have access to when writing your code. And uh, this Lua transceiver allows you to send Lua commands from your Lua box to a missile as long as that missile has a corresponding component on it. So you need the Lua transceiver on there in order to run that. Lua transceivers are absurdly expensive, very delicate, something you really, really, really want to protect well. Uh, embed these as deep within your vehicle as you possibly can, and they'll serve you well. The reason they're so expensive is because Lua guided missiles are very hard to detect and they have a lot more capabilities than regular missiles. So uh, they're an odd mixture of um, very flexible and very expensive to make up for the flexibility that they give you. All right, moving right along. Uh, next up we have the launch pad components. Uh, well, we've already started in on those with the ejectors and the Lua transceivers. Let's just go ahead and talk about the launch pad itself. The launch pad, uh, with the exception of the small launcher, does not normally give you a missile component. This is kind of a dead block. It's not really doing anything in and of itself. What it's doing is starting off your missile. So effectively, uh, this is the start of a series of components that form the tube of the missile. When that missile tube is formed, then we get an actual missile with a uh, length associated with it. So if I put a bunch of um, gantries out in front, gantries are the missile container parts. So uh, each of these contains missile extra missile components. They add to the, to the length of the missile. Adding to the length of a missile increases the number of components that we can attach to that missile. So uh, each of these gives us more length. Uh, the length gives us more components. So if I hit Q on this, I can enter the missile editor. This gives me the ability to control everything that goes into this specific missile. If I was to have just the launch pad for this small launcher, then I get uh, a series of four components. That's not very many. If I add one more gantry, I get another four components. 
and so on and so forth. Every gantry I add gives me another four components for this small launcher. Missiles have three sizes, as you might have noticed. There's the small, there's medium, and then there's these huge missiles, or large missiles, that are two by two. And those are, uh, <laughs> they pack some punch. So uh, we'll get into everything those missiles can do and the differences between them later. What we're going to do for now is just go through the various different types of launch pads and uh, associated components. So we've got the gantries that we can add in front of a small missile launch pad. Uh, and then we've got a hatched gantry. These are much more durable than the gantries behind them. Uh, they have armor, they've got a lot more hit points. So uh, if you have a solid wall of armor, you want one of these as your outermost component. If you're just tacking a uh, bunch of components onto an exposed, uh, say, a two-axis spin turn or a two-axis turret, you don't necessarily need the hatch on there because any hit's probably going to destroy that turret anyway. Uh, save yourself the materials. Uh, it's a little more expensive than the regular gantry. Just build a regular gantry out front. Uh, it's not going to matter. Uh, but if you, like I said, if you are embedding this in an armored wall, definitely put a hatched gantry out front. It's a lot more durable than a regular gantry. Uh, over twice the durability, despite the health not being quite twice what it is for the regular gantry, the doubled armor more than makes up for that. Uh, however, you are paying more for it, and it is heavier, so yeah, be aware of that. Uh, that is the small missile launcher. Uh, there's another type of uh, gantry that is common amongst all of these uh, various different missile types, um, uh, missile sizes rather. There's the rail launcher. So the rail launcher connects on the bottom to a connector. And this is a little bit special because I can't connect other components to it like I can with a normal launch pad. I can attach an ejector add-on here, but it's not going to do anything. It's not connected. But what this does is it lets me put a very nice looking uh, rail of missiles out here. Furthermore, I can pick up an invisible rail gantry, and if I replace a couple blocks out there, you can see the uh, little gantry part in the middle. That gantry part is actually gone, so the gantry kind of uh, is invisible, and we still have the missile length provided by that gantry. So that's excellent if you're wanting to create the illusion of a missile that's uh, on a rail that's smaller than the actual missile is. Uh, it's entirely a cosmetic thing. This has no statistical difference between a regular rail gantry. However, do note that these are half as durable as a regular full gantry, and they are exactly as expensive. So uh, while these are great for cosmetics, not so great for actual... Uh, functionality. Um, usually these are used to attach missiles to like an outside wing or something like that, where you want to make it look like the missiles are just kind of hanging out there in space. For the small missiles in particular, uh, when you have a small missile launch pad, it's giving you four missiles. The exception to that is the single rail launcher, and these just come in rail versions. Uh, that just has a single missile attached to it. Worth noting, too, with a regular launch pad, the back is solid. You cannot put anything behind it. With a rail launcher, you can put gantries behind and in front of it. So I can add a couple more gantries back here and get extra missile length. The launcher just needs to be somewhere. It doesn't really matter where in the missile it is. With the single rail launcher, we have something very similar. Again, with the single gantries, uh, I can add more gantry on the front and back and I can add more invisible gantry on the front and back as well. So uh, that is just mounting a single missile, however, not the four missiles that a full gantry gives me. Moving up to the medium missiles, I have a launch pad and I've got the rail launchers as before. The uh, medium gantry is not solid, unlike the small gantry. So uh, you can see here there's only one missile, however, it takes up the entire block of space there. And that missile is going to be a lot more powerful based on its size. So uh, if I take a look at this, uh, let's just uh, take out some of these warheads. Uh, just put uh, fuel tanks in here and put one explosive warhead in here. Uh, the amount of HE damage or high explosive damage this is going to do is 1723 for one warhead. And if I take a look at, uh, say, this uh, single rail gantry here, 
Uh, let's uh, go ahead and carve some of the length off that so we're not having to mess with so many components. And if we just put a single explosive warhead on the nose of this, that is 273 damage. That's less than four times, uh, or less than a fourth of the damage of the medium missile. So uh, the medium missiles are definitely more powerful in terms of uh, damage per volume. Going back to the medium missiles again, we also have rail launchers and rail gantries. Uh, these work exactly the same as the, medi or as the small versions, with the exception that, again, they only give you the one missile that is much larger. Uh, you also have the hatched gantry, which is a uh, ending gantry that is extremely durable and gives you two components. Uh, worth noting, the small missile gives you four components per block. The medium missile gives you two components per block and the large gives you one component per block, of length, rather. So uh, the hatched gantry is very durable, 1,200 health, 40 armor. The arrowed hatched gantry is an aerodynamic version of this that has very low drag. Uh, it's also smaller. However, it's also got a lot less health. The hatched gantry is quite durable, uh, by far the most durable block out of this size of missile system. And again, you want to use that if you have a solid wall of armor. However, if you're tightly packing missiles in, say you've got uh, another missile launcher right up top here, uh, you probably don't have room for another one of those gantries, so you could put instead another hatch up there. Another trick these missiles have is the reversed launch pad. So the reversed launch pad is, um, well, reversed. If I put a launch pad down there and stick some gantries out here, You'll note that the nose of the missile is pointing towards the launcher. That's interesting. Uh, also, if I was to put an ejector on here, it's going to launch the missile backwards. Uh, that's unusual. What this is usually used for is missiles that you drop behind your vehicle. Those can be useful in a number of circumstances. Uh, basically, it's anything that uh, we're not going to fire forwards out of the vehicle and expect to clear its own launcher. Uh, that could mean that the thruster doesn't kick on for a few seconds after the missile is launched. could mean any number of things. But uh, these are definitely going to fire backwards, not forwards. Uh, that can be useful, uh, but yeah, it's going to be a very specific set of circumstances that you want to do that. Uh, again, you can use hatches just like normal, uh, though since in this case you are dropping the missile behind you, I would tend to recommend the regular hatched gantries, not the arrow hatched, uh, because they are more durable and because you are not likely to fly backwards, uh, depending on your type of vehicle, of course. So the arrow hatched gantry would reduce your drag pointing backwards. The regular hatched gantry would not, but if you're always flying forwards anyway, then the extra drag doesn't really matter and you might as well just go with the more durable block, especially since they have the same cost. Moving on to large missiles, we have the large launch pad. We've already taken a look at this. And this is a much more delicate type of missile. And I say delicate not because it's more fragile, uh, rather it's actually quite a bit more durable than the others. That's 1,200 health compared to the 300 of the medium launcher. Uh, so it's not uh, delicate in that sense, but what it is delicate uh, in regards to is the uh, positioning of it. Now, if you see the triangles in the launch pad, the uh, gantries here have to be on the side that does not have a triangle. That is the only place they will attach. Uh, up here I've got this launch pad attached here, and if I was to put a launch or a set of gantries out here, this isn't going to work because it's on the wrong side of the launch pad. They have to be on this side of the launch pad that does not have the triangle on it in order to actually form a missile. Yeah, very touchy. Very, very touchy. Uh, there's also a couple of different types of hatches. As before, these rail launchers work exactly the same way as you'd expect. Uh, the hatches, however, uh, do not actually contain any components. Whereas the gantries back here contain exactly one component per block length, the hatch does not contain any components whatsoever. That is in contrast to the medium and small, where the uh, hatches do contain components. Uh, what the hatches do have in the large missiles is durability. 
These things are insanely durable. The 2x2 hatch has 5,000 health. The 4x4 has 20,000 health. That is ridiculous. If I look at the heaviest, largest piece of heavy armor that I have, that has 6,000 health, 40 armor. If I look back at the large missile 4x4 hatch, that is 20,000 health and 40 armor for something that takes the same volume as one heavy armor beam. Of course, you pay for it in material cost and weight. Uh, the weight there is 1,600, the material cost is 1,600 compared to the heavy armor beams, 100 and 800 weight. Uh, so yeah, you're paying for it. But that missile block is not, or the stuff behind that, the stuff behind this hatch is not going to die. It's going to be fine. That will go through a nuclear explosion, essentially, and be fine. Those hatches will protect everything behind them. That being said, the 4x4 hatch is also 4x4, and it's enormous. Uh, yeah. It's, it's absurdly large. Yeah. Uh, this is larger than the front of a lot of vehicles that I produce. <laughs> uh, I might be able to fit two of these on what I would consider a medium-sized vehicle if I made a lot of other concessions for it. These also aren't particularly aerodynamic blocks. Uh, they have no aerodynamic properties, meaning, meaning they are going to give you as much drag as a flat wall. Uh, so generally not something you want to put facing forwards on a vehicle if that vehicle is supposed to be going fast. Something to keep in mind if you're trying to produce a jet. So anyway, uh, moving on. That is all of our physical components. And from that, missiles don't look all that bad, really. Uh, you've got your uh, controller here that controls things. You've got the connectors. You put the uh, missile launch pad on the connectors. You might add a few other components depending on your missile type. You stick some ejectors on the launch pad to give them some kick out of the gate. And if you're into programming, you can put a Lua transceiver on there. That's not so bad, right? Well, that's where the fun part comes in. Uh, see, these missiles have, we've taken a look at this a little bit before, a lot of components. Like, there's, there, there's, there's a lot of different components. 